At the end of the accounting year, nominal accounts are dash. That is A, balanced and transferred to the profit and loss account. B, not balanced and transferred to profit and loss account. C, not balanced and transferred to balance sheet. D, balanced and transferred to balance sheet. At the end of the accounting year, nominal accounts are. Normally, nominal accounts are not balanced. They are totaled and they are transferred to profit and loss account. So your correct answer should be B. Not balanced and transferred to profit and loss account. Opening stock 30,000. Cost of goods available for sale 1,60,000. Sales were 1,60,000. Gross profit on sales is 30%. Calculate closing stock. A. Nil. B. 48,000. C. 98,000. And D. None of the above. Sales is 1,60,000. Gross profit on sales is 30%. Therefore, 1,60,000, the cost of goods sold. Sales were 1,60,000. Gross profit on sales was 30%. <clears throat> Therefore, cost of goods sold is 1,60,000 minus 48,000. That's 1,12,000. What is this? This is the cost of goods sold. What were the cost of goods available for sale was 1,60,000 was available for sale. Goods available for sale includes the closing stock but cost of goods sold is only 1,12,000. Therefore, closing stock must be 1,60 minus 1,12,000 equal to 48,000. Correct answer B, 48,000. Mind you, what is the cost of goods available for sale? The opening stock plus the purchases. They were goods available for sale, but how much was sold? Actually, only some, actually, certain amount was sold. The balance remaining is closing stock. So, cost of goods available for sale includes closing stock, but cost of goods sold does not include closing stock. <clears throat> Which of the following statements is false? A. Reserve is an appropriation of profits. B. Provision for tax still not paid is a re reserve. C. Capital reserve is created out of capital profits. D. None of the above. Which of the following statements is false? Reserve is an appropriation of profits is true. Capital reserve is created out of capital profits is also true. Provision for tax not paid does not become a reserve. So the statement which is false is B. Correct answer B. The capital of a sole trader is affected by A. Purchase of raw material B. Commission received C. Cash received from trade receivables and D. Purchase of an asset for cash. The capital of a sole trader is affected by by income which is commission received. Capital of a sole trader would be affected by commission received. Income goes up, profit goes up and the capital goes up. <clears throat> a decrease in the provision for bad and doubtful debts results in A. Increase in net profit B. Increase in equity C. Decrease in net profit D. Both increase in net profit and increase in equity. If there is a decrease in provision for bad and doubtful debts, it would result in increase in profit as well as increase in equity. Correct answer should be D. A firm has 8 employees. Each gets a salary of 8,000 per month. After 1st January 2014, their salaries increased by 10%. On 1st July 2014, 
they employ two trainees at salary of 2500 per month the firm paid 11 month salary only and has to pay the last one month salary the amount of total salary paid and outstanding salaries as on 31 12 2014 will be a 7 lakh 4000 and 69000 B seven lakh ninety nine four hundred and seventy five four hundred C seven lakh sixty four thousand and sixty four thousand or D none. <clears throat> so eight employees they were getting a salary of eight thousand each, but their salaries have increased by ten percent. So eight thousand into eight employees this was sixty four thousand, but now the salary is plus six thousand four hundred. That is. Seventy thousand four hundred. <clears throat> On first July, they employed two trainees at a salary of two thousand five hundred per month. So seventy thousand four hundred per month. There is one set of employees. Another set of employees, two trainees at salary of two thousand five hundred per month, or Five thousand per month. This should be for how many months? Basically, from first July, July, August, September, October, November, and December. But the firm paid only eleven months salary. Therefore, we won't take six months. We'll take five months. And for this first case, we will take eleven months. So what is it? We get seventy four hundred into eleven months salary was paid. That is seven lakh seventy four. Four hundred and plus twenty five thousand, giving us seven lakh ninety nine four hundred. And what is outstanding? Five thousand <clears throat> for one month is outstanding. That would be seventy five four hundred. Therefore, seven lakh ninety nine four hundred and seventy nine seventy five four hundred. Is the outstanding salary seven lakh ninety nine four hundred is the salary paid and outstanding salary is seventy five four hundred. Correct answer is option B. The trial balance of a trader contains following items: trade receivables rupees three lakh twenty thousand, provision for bad and doubtful debts rupees seventeen thousand, bad debts rupees twenty thousand. Further information: Provide five percent for bad and doubtful debts. Find out the amount to be transferred to profit and loss account. A eighteen thousand, B nineteen thousand, C seventeen thousand, and D twenty thousand. The one way of doing the amount to be transferred to profit and loss account is new provision plus bad debts minus old provision. If we do that, we would get provide five percent provision for doubtful debts. <clears throat> that is five percent This is there in the trial balance, which should be five percent of three lakh twenty thousand. Sixteen thousand. Sixteen thousand is the new provision. Bad debts was twenty thousand, and the old provision was seventeen thousand. Less old provision, so you get nineteen thousand. Correct answer should be B, nineteen <coughs> thousand. X Limited's profit and loss account for the year ended thirty first December two thousand eleven includes the following information: depreciation eighty four five hundred, bad debts two thousand five hundred, and increase in provision for doubtful debts twenty two thousand. There's a proposed dividend seventy three two hundred, retained profit for the year one lakh twenty two thousand, liability for tax is twenty six four hundred. State what amounts should be transferred to provisions and two to reserves. Three neither related to provisions nor to reserves. So here, let us see profit and loss account. Twenty two thousand 
depreciation is an expense 84500 bad debts is an expense 2500 so this is neither reserve nor provision increase in provision so this is provision provision is 22000 proposed dividend is also a provision that 73200 retain profit is a reserve 122000 liability for tax this is actually shown as provision for tax 26 Four hundred provision for tax liability for tax. So this is a provision. This is a provision. This is a provision. If you see the total, you get eighty-seven thousand is actually expenses. One lakh twenty-one six hundred is the amount of provision, and one lakh twenty-two thousand is the amount of reserves. So the correct answer should be one lakh twenty one six hundred. Provision reserves one lakh twenty two thousand and eighty seven thousand. Correct answer option A. Mr. Daru and Paru have following transactions between them. On April first, Mr. Daru owes Paru rupees fifteen thousand. Fifteenth April, Daru purchased goods for seventy five thousand from him. During April, Paru gets a cash memo to him for rupees ten thousand in urgent need of money. Zero point five percent cash discount taken by Daru after clearing half of his dues to Paru. Calculate discount received by Daru during April two thousand fourteen. A rupees two twenty five. B rupees two fifty. C rupees one sixty two point five zero. And D rupees one eighty seven point five zero. So discount which is received by Daru. Daru owes fifteen thousand. Then again he purchased goods for seventy five thousand. During April, Mr. Paru gets a cash memo from him for rupees ten thousand, saying that he is in urgent need of money. Assuming this ten thousand is also paid, we have got now one lakh five thousand. No, seventy five eighty five one lakh. One lakh is the total amount which Daru has to pay Paru. He clears half his dues, so fifty thousand is paid. After clearing half his dues, he gets five percent discount taken by Daru after clearing half of his dues. So five percent into point zero five would be equal to two fifty. <clears throat> so correct answer B rupees two fifty would be the discount received by Daru during two thousand. During April two thousand fourteen, correct sequence as per the order of permanency. Trade receivables is one, patents two, machinery three, and cash in hand. <clears throat> permanent, the most permanent asset. Let's say patents followed by machinery, followed by trade receivables, followed by cash. So what is the sequence? That is two, three, one, and four. Two, three, one, and four. Correct option. Correct is B. <clears throat> B two, three, one, and four. Mukesh sold goods to Suresh at an invoice price of rupees six lakh at cost plus twenty five percent. One fourth of the goods are lost in transit. Insurance claim of seventy two thousand is received. What is the amount of abnormal loss to be debited to profit and loss account? A rupees one lakh twenty thousand. B forty eight thousand. C seventy two thousand. And D one lakh fifty thousand. Cost is hundred, profit is twenty five, selling price was one twenty five. Mukesh sold goods to Suresh at invoice price of six lakh, and one fourth of the goods one fourth of the goods are lost in transit. <clears throat> So, what is the cost price of the goods being sent? 
25 by 125 of 6 lakh is your profit. One lakh twenty thousand, so that the cost of goods is equal to cost of goods totally sent is equal to four lakh eighty thousand. Four lakh eighty thousand. One fourth of this, one fourth is lost. One fourth of four lakh eighty is one lakh twenty thousand. One fourth of the goods are lost in transit. Insurance claim received is seventy two thousand. Therefore, what is the amount of abnormal loss taken is 48,000. So, this is loss. This is claim or received insurance received. So, this would be abnormal loss of 48,000. Correct answer should be B, 48,000.